I'd like to turn the other cheek on this one. And I think it's generally best to stick with the phrase, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. But in the eternal words of brothers everywhere, he started it. I was fully prepared to ignore, but I was getting comments to my videos in reference, and I'm getting sick of seeing the video right next to mine. What we're talking about here is Guy's recent Hedera critique on his YouTube channel, The Coin Bureau. I can deal with analysis that is wrong, and there are plenty of inaccuracies in his video. But what shouldn't be accepted is to mislead viewers with propaganda. And there are some coincidences with the timing of the Coin Bureau video that point in this direction, and we'll get into that at the end of this video. But first, let's explore the main source he uses to criticize Hedera, the Eric Wall FUD that was posted in August 2019. This FUD attempts to frame the 10,000 transaction per second claims made by Hedera as disingenuous. He cites Hedera's smart contract transaction volume capabilities, which are much lower, in the dozen to two dozen transaction per second range. The truth is, smart contracts are inherently inefficient, and Hedera has chosen to optimize native layer services that Hedera feels can be used to accomplish pretty much everything smart contracts can be used for. Guy claims that all other transactions beside wallet-to-wallet -wallet crypto transactions are limited to 10 transactions per second like smart contracts. This is not the case. As in addition to crypto transfers, Hedera can handle 10,000 transactions per second for native token transfers made possible with the new Hedera token service, as well as Hedera consensus service transactions. Smart contracts can be further optimized on Hedera, but that's not the point. HTS and HCS are what Hedera are optimized for, and what enterprises have made clear they want to use. But you don't have to take my word for it. The man himself, Dr. Lehman Baird, explains Hedera's strategy nearly two years ago. Enjoy. Smart contract is a native service of our platform. Then on top of that, you build your, your various um, smart contracts, and you can build as many as you want, and they can do anything. They're written in a Turing complete language. It means they can do anything. But of course, they run more slowly than a native service would run. For example, we have the native service of cryptocurrency with the H bars, but you could also write a smart contract for an ERC-20. And the ERC-20 is doing the same thing as a cryptocurrency, but the native cryptocurrency is going to be faster than the smart contract, much faster. We can do thousands of cryptocurrencies per second. We're going to have, I think, 10,000 probably at launch and, and at OA, I mean. We'll throttle it down to 10,000. It's much faster than that already in our test nets. And we are um, working to tune it. It'll be a, you know, many tens of thousands. So the cryptocurrency is fast. Smart contracts are slow. They're a few a second. They're, they're not all very many. And so you can do anything in a smart contract, but it's not the same as a native service. And every ledger has this issue. Smart contracts, now some of them emphasize smart contracts and make them faster, but still a native service is faster. And so every ledger struggles with this question, what should we make to be our native services that give you all the advantages over just running a smart contract on top of a service? And everyone has to make that decision. But we would rather you make that decision. We would let you make that choice. And here's how. We're offering a fourth service now, native service called the consensus service. The consensus service, of course, is fast because it's a native service. And what it lets you do is build what is equivalent to new services. And I say you, developers, without talking to us, without us even knowing about it. Just like you can write a smart contract without talking to us. You can write your own service without talking to us. And your service lives on top of the consensus service, and your service runs at the speed of a native service. Despite all this, Hedera wanted to support smart contracts to support developers who had put effort into developing smart contract applications. Also, let's not forget that Hedera is currently throttling its transaction volume capabilities to 10,000, and it can handle much more when necessary. These numbers are also based on nodes using CPUs, and the volumes can be further increased if GPUs are utilized. And the list goes on. Hedera also can be sharded, allowing essentially unlimited scaling. From what I can tell, another platform that Guy is a proponent of didn't support smart contracts at all, though they are looking to implement support now. Hmm. That sounds like zero transactions per second smart contract support by my calculation. 
Another point on the Eric Wall FUD is the lack thereof since. The FUD was pushed in two posts. He wrote one, which was rebutted by Paul Madsen of Hedera, and then he wrote a rebuttal to Paul. Paul is a fantastic computer scientist, but his rebuttal lacked the snarky, entertaining writing style of Eric. There was no need to keep going back and forth, and Lehman met with Eric a couple months later to explain the flaws in his post. The only negative thing Eric has posted since has been a very ill-timed jab at the H-bars underperformance. This tells me that Lehman convinced him that the tech and strategy are sound, and he should find another tech vector or just ignore it. And frankly, I trust the due diligence of Google, IBM, and LG far more than I do that of Eric Wall. No offense. Okay, his next major criticism is HBAR's tokenomics. There's a lot to unpack with tokenomics, and I'll be the first to admit that they aren't perfect. But the main reason is simple. Regulatory compliance. Coin Bureau acts as if Hedera only selling to accredited investors is some kind of a front to retail investors. But to remain compliant with SEC and CFTC regulations, initial sales must be made in this way. Not to mention that the majority of the money raised by Hedera from accredited investors was at a higher valuation than retail enjoyed until recently. Said another way, the majority of retail investors got a better deal than the majority of those rich investors. It is true that some bonus HBAR have been and will be given to some of these investors. But this was mainly to address a mistake in the fundraising valuation that was only clear in retrospect. And it won't change the fact that they will likely end up with a higher cost basis than many retail investors. But what's also important to note is Guy's analysis overstated the amount by 10 times. Finally, he clearly attempts to spook potential investors by saying that early investors, also known as SAFT 1 and 2, will perpetually dump HBAR. To put this claim into perspective, SAFT 1 and 2 combined have less than 6 billion HBAR, or about 12% of total supply, and the distributions will end for SAFT 2 in mid-2023 and SAFT 1 a few months later. We could certainly get more into the weeds, but here's the bottom line. Hedera has a gradual, multi-decade disinflationary distribution that ends with a hard cap of 50 billion HBAR. Right now, Hedera has a distribution of about 15% of total supply, comparable to Bitcoin just 18 months after launch, which wasn't a bad time to get involved. Next, he criticizes the patent and Hedera's choice to be open review instead of open source. Guy's stated belief is that Hedera has done this because they are afraid of another development team being more successful implementing Hashgraph. This is a stretch, but the patent is a good deterrent to a platform that might want to use the tech, but likely wouldn't follow the regulatory constraints that Hedera does. This would give them a temporary advantage, but could result in ruin for their prospective investors. The Hedera founders have always acted with integrity, and there's no reason to think that the rationale for the patent is anything but what they claim, to prevent confusion around hashgraph implementations and forking. Forking and competing networks can cause real confusion in the market. It's an undeniable problem that warrants a solution. Raul Powell, CEO of Real Vision, one of the most vocal entrants into the crypto space, has said that he completely divested from crypto in the summer of 2017 due to the Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash hard fork. Imagine the apprehension of a Fortune 500 company committing millions of dollars to an application on a network that could fork, causing significant confusion and uncertainty. Putting in place controls, including patents, to prevent forking is completely rational, especially for a platform as enterprise-focused as Hedera. There's another vocal critic of the Hedera patent. Charles Hoskinson, founder of Cardano, who said the following about Hedera's choice to patent the Hashgraph algorithm. Due to the vulgarity, I'll let you read his quote. His rationale, that building on Hedera carries risk of being sued by Hedera, doesn't hold water. The patent is only to protect the underlying tech and network. Hedera welcomes all to build on the public network. Hedera would have no better chance of suing a developer building on Hedera than if Charles attempted to sue a Cardano app developer. It's just not how the legal system works. I highlight this quote because it might shed some light into Coin Bureau's motive in putting out what I would call a hit piece. As alluded to, Coin Bureau is a massive proponent of Cardano, and it's not a stretch that Charles, 
and anyone that has a vested interest in ADA could potentially see Hedera as a threat. Despite Cardano's much higher market cap, Hedera arguably has far more enterprise adoption among Fortune 500 level enterprises, a stated goal of Mr. Hoskinson. I mentioned suspicious timing in the beginning of this video as well. The timing of the Coin Bureau's hit piece relative to BitBoy's positive Hedera video is the cherry on top that makes me think that this was propaganda and not analysis. During the weeks leading up to the Coin Bureau video, Hedera had a string of good news and coverage and was gaining momentum in price. BitBoy, a YouTuber gaining significant popularity with 600,000 subscribers, announced a week prior that he was going to do a positive Hedera video. This pre-announcement could have given anyone who wanted to put out a critique at about the same time ample time to prepare. Sure enough, BitBoy posted his positive Hedera video. Less than an hour later, Coin Bureau posted his video. What are the chances that these videos would come out within minutes of each other? I seriously doubt this was coincidence. Another aspect of Coin Bureau's coverage of Hedera that makes it highly suspect is the fact that Guy did an earlier glowing review of Hedera in October 2019, a point in time when Eric Wall's FUD had already been posted, and most of the tokenomics that he cited were already well known. Either Guy did inadequate research at the time, or he's gone from a fan to a harsh critic for some other reason. I'll let you come to your own conclusion. The nice thing about Hedera is we don't have to hope and pray that crypto influencers will grace HBAR as having the proper pump of metals to go to the moon, or that Wall Street bets will promote it. We can rest assured that while other platforms say they want Fortune 500 enterprise adoption, Hedera is actually going to get it. And I believe its transaction volume and resulting revenue will skyrocket, taking HBAR's price right along with it. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.